The Party Crasher. My name is Ricky Dennison. I'm what most people would refer to as a high school nerd. I wear thick rimmed glasses and they're a little too big for my face. They fall off a lot and break. They're held together by masking tape, both at the center and one of the arms. I try to make my hair look cool like guys back in the 1950s. I grease it up and comb it so it's wavy. The problem is, within an hour, my waves fall flat and my hair is plastered to my head like a geek. I don't have a job yet, so my mom still buys my clothes. I always tell her that I'm taller than she realizes, but that never stops her from buying pants that are far too short for me and make me look like a dork. I wear shirts with pockets, not because I think they're fashionable, but because I'm really bad about losing pens. If I keep them all in my shirt pockets, I don't lose them. I know it just lends to my nerdish appearance, but I have to have my pens. Needless to say, I get bullied at school. <laughs> Most people refer to me as a nerd, dweeb, geek, freak, weirdo, or wonk. A lot of boys knock the books out of my hands. I often get pushed and shoved while walking through the hallways. I sit alone at the cafeteria and people occasionally pelt me with food. It was a rough life for me. That is, until Bo arrived. Bo was a big kid who moved in next door to me. He was one grade higher than me, and he was a big time jock. He was instantly the star of the football team. Girls flocked around him. Guys all wanted to be his friend. He was the big man on campus. He wasn't mean to me either. He acknowledged me when he saw me. He'd say hi or nod to me and smile. He never picked on me, and if he saw anyone else doing so, he'd tell them to stop. Once he was walking down the hall with one of the other popular boys in the school, and that other boy saw me coming and started chanting, Nerd alert, nerd alert. Bo gave that guy a shove and said, Knock it off, that's my neighbor you're picking on, cool it. Ever since that day, nobody else picked on me. My mom and Bo's mom became friends. She'd come over and visit my mom sometimes, and Bo would come with her, and he'd be polite to me. He, he'd talk to me. He'd ask me questions, genuinely curious about my interests and opinions. My life completely changed one day at lunch. I was sitting all alone at my lunch table, per usual. That's when Bo got up from the cool kids table and sat down next to me. Within seconds, all of the girls got up and joined us, and then the guys did too. Just like that, the entire cool kids table had come to me. Since then, instead of people calling me nerd or geek, they called me Ricky. Rather than knock the books from my hands and push me around, they'd pat me on the back and ask how I was doing. I was one of them now. I was a cool kid. And then there were the parties. Since I had become part of the in crowd, I was invited to all the bitchin' parties. And I went to all of them. I'd play games, dance, I'd even drink a beer once in a while. The best part of it was the girls started flirting with me. Every girl wanted to be Bo's girlfriend, but if they couldn't have him, his buddy, who happened to be his neighbor, was a good consolation prize, and believe me, when it comes to girls, there's nothing wrong with being a consolation prize. Everything was going just swimmingly. I was popular, I was one of the cool kids, I was on the verge of having a girlfriend, but then suddenly, my world got rocked. Bo went to a party without me. It was a very select party. Only the most popular, coolest kids were there. But I wasn't invited. I didn't understand. I had been invited to all the other parties as of late. Why wasn't I invited to this one? I asked Bo as to why I didn't get to go to that party, and he said, Don't worry about it. There's a good one next week you can go to. He was right, there was a huge party the following week, and I was invited, and everyone treated me great, but the following week there was another one of those small, secretive parties just for the cool kids, and nobody told me about it. And that's the way it went. 
One week there'd be a big high school bash and I was allowed to attend that, but the following week there'd be a small secret gathering of cool kids and I wasn't welcomed. I wasn't even told. I started spying on that small group of kids, which I dubbed the coolest of the cool. I'd get close to them and listen in on their conversations. I tried to learn as much as I could about their mysterious clandestine meetings, and it didn't take me long to gather up some solid intel. Every other week, the coolest of the cool met at Susan Jensen's house. She lived in a mini mansion at the end of Clifton Street. Her parents took trips every other weekend, so it was the perfect location for these mysterious gatherings. And here was the kicker. Nobody was allowed to enter unless they had a password, and the password changed with every meeting. It was so secretive and enigmatic, I just had to know what was going on there and why I wasn't getting invited. I was one of the cool kids now, I should be there too. One day, while I spied on two of the guys in the locker room, I found out the truth. One of them inquired as to why I wasn't being invited, and my heart dropped when I heard the answer. Bo doesn't want him there. It was Bo. Bo was the reason I wasn't being invited. Obviously, he was threatened by my upward trend in status and wanted to make sure I didn't surpass his popularity. Bo was keeping me out. I was seething with anger, but I kept my rage concealed. I didn't want any of the others to know that I was on to them. I had to stay close. I had to learn more. I had to show Bo that I didn't need him anymore. I had to show him that I could stand on my own. It was the Friday before the next secret meeting of the coolest of the cool. I hid next to Bo's locker, and just before school let out, one of the others from the coolest gang approached him. Hey Bo, tomorrow night is the night. I have the password. Unfortunately, that was all I heard as he whispered that crucial information into Bo's ear. I watched on disappointedly as Bo wrote the password on the palm of his hand. I wasn't going to let that unfortunate lack of knowledge stop me, so I followed Bo. He exited his house at exactly 9.45 p.m. He was dressed in black and drove to Susan Jensen's house. He parked down the street and began walking behind the shield of the tall shrubbery that lined the driveway. It was the perfect place for me to confront him. I know. Bo startled as he spun around to see who spoke the words, and I could see the surprise on his face as he realized it was me. Ricky? I know everything, Bo. I know it's you that's keeping me from being part of the coolest of the cool. You're threatened by me. Ricky, you don't know what you're talking about. Are you denying it? He became animated as he barked at me. No, no, I don't deny it. These gatherings aren't for you. You don't understand, Ricky. You don't understand the pressure of being popular, the constant grind to stay at the top. You don't understand, Ricky. You don't understand. I stepped closer so that we could be face to face. No, I don't. But I will. And with that, I sank my knife deep into Bo's gut. His eyes widened with shock. He grabbed onto my shoulder to keep his balance, but ultimately it did him no good as I drove the blade into his abdomen again and again until he slowly sank to the plush manicured lawn and stared up at the starry sky with no life left in his eyes. I bent down and looked at the password he had scribbled onto his hand. Fidelio. I marched with purpose to the house and pounded on the door. Susan Jensen looked surprised when she opened the door and found me standing there. Ricky, I wasn't expecting you, but I'm sorry. Nobody can enter unless they know the password. I smirked as I spoke with confidence. Fidelio. She grinned and nodded. I recognized a spark of admiration in her eye as she held the door open and allowed me to enter. 
I was led to the library. It was a vast, open room with a few comfortable chairs and a mind-boggling amount of books, both modern and vintage. But it wasn't the room's decor that I was focused on. It was the coolest of the cool, all dressed in black and standing in a large circle. Susan motioned for me to join the circle and announced me by saying, Look who I found. Everybody was not only shocked to see me there, but they were happy. They were genuinely glad to see me. Bo is the only one that is missing. One of the guys spoke up. Well, I guess he chickened out, but we don't need him. Ricky's brave enough to take his place, aren't you, Ricky? I nodded and spoke with arrogance. You're damn right. They laughed, cheered, and applauded my response. I was the coolest guy in school now. Bo had been supplanted. Susan handed me and everyone else in the circle an empty bourbon glass. She then walked around the circle and filled our glasses from a bottle that had no label. She joined the circle and held up her glass as she spoke. The time has come. Drink. Everyone raised the glasses to their lips. They were alarmed when I held up a hand and stopped them. Hold on. As the new leader of the cool kids, I felt it my place to make a toast, so I raised my glass high into the air. To the coolest of the cool. I then chugged down the unknown liquid. Several of the group nodded and grinned. Some seemed nervous. I even heard one guy whisper, Boy, Ricky's got some balls on him. Then, all at once, the rest of the members of the secret club drank from their glasses. Thirty seconds later, when the coolest of the cool began grasping at their throats and dropping to the floor dead, I realized what this secret party that Bo tried to save me from actually was. A suicide party.